with a good sense of humor, who's positive, personable, calm, patient, professional, empathetic, focused and thorough. Everything required to be an excellent 911 communicator. Our first line of help is our emergency medical dispatchers, who and I believe are the most highly trained medical dispatch professionals in Canada. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Toronto Fire Services and Paramedic Services Headquarters. I'm joined today uh, by our Division Chief of Communications, Jackie Preston, and I would like to start um, by saying thank you to the family, friends, and colleagues of our nominees being honoured here today. Collectively, you act as the personal board of directors for our call takers and dispatcher staff, supporting them when they return home after a busy shift that may have included a number of difficult calls. As you are aware, uh, there can be a great deal of pressure receiving frantic pleas for help in potentially life and death situations. Performance under stress is an attribute that all of our staff exhibit daily. Historically at this event, we have publicly recognized individual staff members for exemplary performance as it relates uh, to specific occurrences. This year, uh, as was mentioned in the video, we are acknowledging a team effort. On June 26, 2016, at 7.35 p.m., shift number one received a 911 call reporting heavy smoke coming from the roof of an electronic store at 746 Warden Avenue. The first crew that arrived at scene conducted a rapid size-up of the situation and knew that more resources would be required to deal with the fire that was growing at a fast pace. This occurrence was upgraded twice. In total, 13 fire apparatus and 50 firefighters were dispatched. As the effective response force of firefighters arrived at the scene, the fire burned through the roof, resulting in a defensive attack strategy. A defensive attack occurs when interior conditions are untenable for firefighters and extinguishment efforts move to the outside of the building. When the strategy changes on the fire ground, it's extremely important that our staff on scene are made aware of those changes. Sharing that vital information is the responsibility of our dispatch staff. This occurrence also required the coordination of an evacuation of local businesses as well as residents. These were also assignments that were supported by shift number one staff, as was the notification to CN Railway to halt rail traffic on a nearby line due to heavy smoke conditions. As the call progressed, a wall collapsed. Water pressure was lost, the roof of the building caved in, and two firefighters were injured. An urgent notification was issued. This caused a series of timely responses from our dispatch staff that were on duty that day. All of this was accomplished with excellent teamwork, knowledge of procedures, and an understanding of the support required by our fire ground operations. Robert McGee, who is a scholar and lecturer, is quoted as saying that true character is revealed in the choices that human beings make under pressure. The character of shift number one was demonstrated on June 26. Those staff included District Chief Lennox, Captain Belford, Captain Meisner, and a number of firefighter communicators, Powell, Cairns, Kolonikby, Jessup, Greenlaw, Dapont Judge, McNabb, Hayden, Bellier, Cool, Steger, Nicholson, and of course, Dale Henry, who will be accepting the award on behalf of Shift One. So with that, it is my pleasure to now award the Communicator of the Year Award for Toronto Fire Services. If the rest of Dale's ship would like to come forward or anyone else that would like to join in for a picture, please do. 